feel this place, feel this, feel, do all it is, you know. But do people really know what the glory of God is? Okay. You know, do you really know what you're asking for? See, that's something that we want to look at today. See, when the woman of God told me yesterday, I seen fire on the roof. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And I know what my prayer had been three years ago. And the Lord started dealing with me about his glory. About his glory. And I had to go back in the scriptures and look. Because if we're going to ask God for something, we ought to know what we're asking for. Amen. We ought to know what it entails. Amen. Because, see, there is something to the glory of God. Yes, it is. Yes, and see, without the glory of God, we have nothing. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Yes, without the glory of God, there is nothing. Yes, and see, that's what he wants us to understand. That when his presence is somewhere, mm -hmm. his glory is there. Amen. We Amen. want the glory of God. Look at your neighbor and say, I want the glory of I God. I want the glory of God. You see, in Scripture, Psalms 91, turn there. Yeah. <laughs> see, okay. it is the glory of God that is your refuge. Yes, it, is. it is the glory of God that is your deliverance. Yes, it, is. it is the glory of God that is your strong tower. And as I was getting dressed this morning, I was asking God, I said, Lord, I know about your glory, but I don't know how to explain your glory. He says, I'll be with you, son. Then he started to show me a building that was engulfed in smoke. It was just thick smoke. All right, if you could see a building that's on fire and how the smoke comes. He says, my glory engulfs you. My, my glory takes over. He says, I am my glory. So there's no separation between me and my glory. See, in Psalms 91, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High mm -hmm. okay. shall abide mm -hmm. under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. You see, it says, He that dwells. That means the person that not is visiting, not visiting, not dropping by every now and then. Mm -hmm. The person that has purpose in their heart to put their address in that place. The person that his desire to say, this is where I'm going to live. This is where I'm going to remain. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. David went on to say, I shall say of the Lord. Oh, glory to Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. You see, it's in that glory that glory, that's the secret place, the glory of God. See, in that glory, nothing can touch you, nothing can harm you. Everything is provided for you. You see, God showed that to the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt, and he said, I will lead you by day and by night. He said, I will be a cloud in the daytime and fire at night. What was that symbolizing? If you've ever been in the desert like, 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 like Arizona, uh, Las Vegas, all right, man, that desert hot. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That desert hot. Yes, so what he was doing during the day, he was giving them a shade okay. so they didn't burn up in the sun. And just as hot as the desert, the desert gets in the daytime, it gets just as cold as night. So at night he warmed them up, his glory. His glory provided for them. So you have to understand that when David is saying, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, he's not talking about your neighbor. He's not talking about your job. He's not talking about your friend. He said in the secret place of the Most High. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. David said, I will say of the Lord, he is my fortress and my refuge. Surely, verse 3, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noiseless pestilence. What is that saying? That anything that the devil has devised against you, 
any demons that he has sent against you, any plots, any schemes that he has sent against you, he said, mm -hmm. I'm going to deliver you from that. Now, you may not be delivered out of it, you may be delivered going through it. You've got to understand that character is developed in trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. It's not developed in easy times. Everybody wants easy. You know, even I look at these commercials. I was growing up, I used to love mac and cheese. Wait, mom make it, you know, I'd put that thick cheese on it, and the noodles be in it, put a little of that milk in it and hook it up. Now they, now they got this mac and cheese, you can throw it in the microwave. Kids love it. Quick, fast, in a hurry, and get out of my face. See, everything that you want quick is not good for you. No, it's not. No, it's not. Everything that you're trying to get in a hurry might not be beneficial for you. Go through the fire sometimes and stop, stop asking to be delivered out of it. Say, Lord, is it, if it's your will to deliver me, deliver me. Say, Lord, if it's not your will to deliver me, keep me safe while I go through it. See, you have to understand this. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl and from the noiseless pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. See, this is just representing his glory. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. You see, even Moses asked. He said, hey, 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 Lord, let me see your glory. He said, let, let me see your glory. See, because, see, there was two ways of taking the glory of God. See, when he was on Mount Sinai and he came up in fire and all the noise and the thunder, the people said, are we cool with this? We cool with this, Moses. You go ahead. See, sometimes, you know, when you don't understand God, you'll have a fear of the glory. You see, but Moses and Joshua and the elders went on up. Okay, why? It's because they desire to be in the presence of God. You see, God told Moses to stand on a rock that was near him. Check it out now, a rock that was near him. This symbolizes Jesus the Christ, our rock. And the Lord said, here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock, so it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in a cliff. This is speaking of put you in a cliff of the rock. This is speaking of the born-again believer that comes into Christ Jesus. You see what I'm saying? He says, as God's glory passed by, Moses was in the cleft of the rock, as I said, symbolizing being in Christ. It is God the Father who positions you in Christ, not you yourself. It is God that positions you in Christ. See, no man can come unto God unless he be drawn by God. So for you to be in the kingdom of God, you ought to be rejoicing because you had a personal invitation from God. You had a reach out from God to bring you in. This is something that you should not take contrary. I, you know, I dare you, if you want to go to the White House and then you get in the White House and you calling your friends talking about you in the White House and you ain't even seen the president, but I'm in the White House. Man, I'm in the White House. You, look, you might not even be in the White House. You might be on the ground. Well, you know what? If you can do that about the White House, why can't you do that about the salvation that God has called you into? Amen. 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 Shouldn't be quiet about it. No. No. Let a person know I'm saved. Yes. I ain't perfect. Hello. But I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Well, why are you doing all of this? Why are you doing all of this? Say, God's working on me. Ain't you ever seen the signs of going down the street? Construction in progress. Okay. <laughs> they just let you know what is going on. That's right. That's right. See, we're in a sanctification process. Yes, we are, Lord. God is working things in us and working things out of us. Some things that he's working out, you understand me, is uncomfortable, but they got to come out. Some things that he's pushing in is uncomfortable, but they got to come in. We got to let God do what God does, because God wants the best for us. We think we want the best for each other. We think we want the best for ourselves, but God knows what is best. See, praising God and being thankful unto God brings his glory. Amen. That's why we go in and we worship him, because it brings his glory. It brings his glory. It brings his glory. We got to know, see, see we, have a, we have a set 
service, you know the program, you know the program, like a, like you're going to a restaurant and you know what's on the program. Look, I know you're going to start saying subject to change. Because we got to let the Holy Ghost have his way. Amen. Sometimes service will be 30 minutes, sometimes service may be three hours. You know, you just got to get ready to follow the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? You got to know that you understand me that when God starts work, somebody gonna get deliverance. Somebody gonna get healed. Somebody's life's gonna change. You got to know that. So you gotta let him do it in his time frame, not yours. You understand? Because see, we all again I say a work in yes, progress. Yes, we are. Amen. Yes, we are. Second Chronicles 5, 13 through 14. Now, as I said, praising God, thanking God. And you probably sit there and say, well, I ain't got nothing really to thank God for already, Pastor. I mean, you don't know how rough it is in my life. You don't know how bad things are. Look, you, did you wake up this morning? Amen. I tell you what you do then. Hold your breath for the next 10 minutes. Okay, I bet you'll be thankful in 11. <laughs> Why? It's because we take it for granted. We think that God is just supposed to provide this air. He's just supposed to wake me up. Today is Father's Day. And tell all the men in here, happy Father's Day. But don't treat God like a sugar daddy. He is God. He is not the one you call on whenever you're in need and you don't see him or talk to him any other time but when you're in need. You see, you've got to understand that he desires to be your father. Then he went even further than that. He said, call me Abba. He said, Daddy. Show us a better relationship. There's many of us in here that had fathers, but yet still didn't have fathers. Then there's others that didn't even have a father. Okay? So we didn't know what a father figure was. We didn't understand the love that came from a father. And even as a father right now, I appreciate Father's Day. But growing up and in my adulthood, I didn't understand Father's Day because it wasn't of no importance to me. Because even growing up with a father in the home, I didn't have a father that I could deal with, a father that I could talk to, a father that would share. So I didn't know. So when God was telling me he was my father, the only thing that I could relate it to is the father that I knew. And I really didn't want nothing more to do with that. So a lot of times you try to treat God the same way from your human understanding of a father. You see, this is why the Jewish nation can understand father better than we can. Because there is a bond between the father and the son. Even the father names the son and his name has a meaning. Everything happens between the bond and the father. Why? It's because the the son, when he goes out, he is going to take the father's teachings. Right. He is going to take the father's knowledge, and he's going to put it into his family, and it's going to be passed down. See, a lot of us, we didn't have that. So when we come and we talk about Father God, our conception of God is not in line with God. We have to be retrained, re-understood, relearned all again about what a father is. See, you have to know this. This is why a lot of times people do not have, they have lip service for God. I love God. God is my life. And I don't doubt that they mean, but the Bible teaches us that love is action. Can't find you nowhere. Can't find you nowhere, but you got love for God. I like, I like Stevie Pastrami. You can find here, Stephen Petrano. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. You can, if you stay long enough during the week, you can see me pull up in there. My wife told me, she said, you know the doctor told you don't eat that greasy food. I said, let me tell you something. I let everything go with Stevie. I got to pray about this pastrami. I said, I'm headed to Stevie. I said, you can eat you some carrots, you can eat you some broccoli. I'm going to go get me a steamy pastrami with some hot pepper. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Why? It's because I care about Stevie's. If you care about God, you will be doing the things that God has told you to do. Amen. Then, you know, well, I don't understand it. There's a whole lot you don't understand in your life. You ain't that smart, but you still do it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Lord. Oh, let me leave that alone. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 5, 13, 14 says the trumpets, the instruments joined in one accord to give praises and thanks to God, accompanied by all different types of music instruments. These folks were rocking. They were rocking for God. Man, they had the music going on. They was dancing. They were rocking for God. You know, you have to understand, sometimes you got to rock for God. Come up in here, y'all stuffed up. You understand me? Don't want to smile. You understand me? Come on. This is the house of the Lord. Amen. This is the place, you understand me, where we are supposed to be free in the Lord. Amen. You see what I'm saying? I ain't going to Stevie's and not get my pastrami. I'd be a fool to just stand up in line. And people say, what you want? I was trying me. Well, go on. No, that's okay. I'm just reading the menu. <laughs> no, I'm about business. I want my pastrami. So when I come to church, I want what God has for me. Amen. 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 My time is valuable. God has told me that. He said, redeem the time wisely. So when I come to church, man, I come to get my praise on. Amen. I don't want to hear no foolishness. I want to hear what thus says the Lord. Because, see, that's going that to have to keep me. That's like going to the gas station on E and not getting no gas. Fool. Excuse me. Anyway. Is that right? Yeah, very much. <laughs> Praise God. It says, he is good. Who is good? God is good. This is what it says in the scripture. He is good. He, his love endures for how long? Ever. For how long? Ever. For how long? Ever. That's right. Forever his love endures. Then the temple of the Lord, what? What, what happened after all of this? Now, now get the picture. They in there rocking. Praising God. Talking about his love and doers forever. They got it going on. Then all of a sudden the house fills up with the glory cloud of God. What happened in there brought his presence. It brought his presence. God looked down to see his people, and he stepped out of heaven and brought his presence there. His presence, looking at the praising and the worshiping. People that were sitting there got healed. People that needed deliverance got deliverance. People that needed God, follow God, because his very presence showed up. That's right. That's right. In your house when you're going through something. If you need his presence, just start worshiping. Clapping your hands. It ain't about what you feel. It's about what you're doing. Yes, sir. You can't praise God alone and not get into it. Oh. You can't do that. Yeah. And if you do call somebody because you're dead, you need to raise you back to life. Okay. I'm trying to tell you. Praise him. You're on your job and you're going through something. Go find one of them bathroom stalls in there and the women's bathroom or the men's bathroom lock the door and get in there and get the praise of God. You understand me? Well, Pastor, ain't that no crazy? They already think you crazy. So act like it. Come on. Don't crazy with Jesus. You got to understand that we are the move for God. I want his presence. I want his presence always, continually. I want nothing but him. I will serve for nothing less than him. That's what Moses meant when he said, if you don't go with me, I am not going. We got to be the same way. Amen. God, don't go with us. I ain't going. Oh, you got to understand. Something happened when he started praising and thanking God. Mm. You're going to come in here. You're going to see like what we did today. You may see some radical stuff up in here. Because we're going to praise God. We're going to worship God. Yes. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Sometimes you might run up in here and that might be all that we do. And then some, I might send Will up here to say, Amen, service is over. Amen. Hello. Praise God. We got where we came from. That's right. See, we got to get on God's schedule, not ours. That's right. That's right. Amen. It ain't no more about pastor schedule. It ain't no more about religious schedule. It's about the Holy Ghost schedule. Because, see, when we have the Holy Ghost schedule, oh, Lord, hear me. When we have the Holy Ghost schedule, things will happen. Yes, mm. That ain't what happened, Matthew. Yes. We'll see the miraculous. We'll see the impossible. We'll see the supernatural when the Holy Ghost shows up. Yes. Yes. Mm. about you, but I need it. I'm tired of the fakes and I'm tired of the frauds. Man, it's time to be with some people that want to 
worship God. They want to serve God. They want to be with God. It's time. You know how some youngsters say, how you youngsters say it. It's time to shake that spot. <laughs> time to get with some real folk that love God. I believe God be a situation changer, circumstance regulator. Oh, a finance provider. Oh, a healer. They say the bomb of Gilead. Oh, you ain't hearing me, though. You ain't hearing me, though. Do you need healing? He said he is the bomb of Gilead. He is the only one that can stick his hand in your chest and touch a torn heart and mend it. He is the only one that can go in and take a broken heart and massage it. He is the only one that can do that. The doctors, they'll tell you to take this, tell you to take that. But all we need to take is some more Jesus. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. Oh, yeah. I looked at my, my godson. He out in Texas, and they, at they found a reunion, and he on a big old horse. And he big anyway. He on the horse. I was praying for that horse. <laughs> I looked at it. I looked at it. And I said, tell him there's a new sheriff in town, brother. <laughs> and his name is Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did it jokingly, right? Mm -hmm. But as I started to think about it, it was a revelation. Mm -hmm. You got to start telling these devils and demons in your life, Hello. there's a new sheriff in town. Uh -huh. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. And get you some of that good, bad, and ugly music and put it on. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. See, God was and still is holding tight to his glory. And see, Jesus was the very example of his glory. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews 1 and 3. People, I hope you're getting this because, man, look at here. It got to, hey, 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 there's some things going to happen up in here. Amen. Things going to happen up in your life. Shaking going on. Shaking all off, Lord. Even for the you, even for you. Breakthroughs in your life. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There you go. Smile about it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. See, God ain't about age. Okay. He's about believing. Hebrews 1 and 3 says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express, the exact, the express, the exact image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged all sin, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. It said that Jesus, being the, the very brightness of his glory. Look, a world that didn't understand God's glory, a world that didn't appreciate God's glory, he feels it in the sun. And check what he does. He steps out of heaven into earth and brings his glory, the glory of the only the very image. You see, you see, we we spray ourselves with perfume and cologne, and when we go certain places, we'll walk by people and people will say, ooh, that's a beautiful smell. Well, what you actually have, you have the very essence of what's in the bottle. But because it's on you, it can be recognized. And people will ask you, what's this you wear? See, you ought to step into a room. And the glory of God should be all on you in such a way that as you walk by, people look at you. Amen. Look at you. Why? It's because of the glory of God. It doesn't matter whether you're with a, 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 in a church, a market, they should know that the glory of God is on you. Amen. Have you ever seen somebody in a, a room or something, you know, in a church or an event, and they just demanded the attention of the people? What it was, it was the glory of God on them. It was the glory. And they were like, what you have? You would tell Jesus. You were the very brightness of 
his glory. The very image of God. Somebody gonna say, well, you know, you know, Pastor, I, 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 I got it now, I got it now. That was Jesus. He, he was the image of God. Well, does it not say over in Genesis 1:26 through 28 that you were, you were created in the very image of God? It says he created them in the image of God. God created you in his image. But what happened when sin came in? The glory of God left you. All right, that's why it says in Romans that all have fallen short of the glory of God. Why? It's because of sin. See, you have to understand. Now, it brings me to this right here. In the book of Ezekiel, we see that there was a time when the glory of God left the church, left the building, exit the building. We got to understand why it happened. I'm going to read some some of my study notes real quickly to you because I want you to have a clear background before we could go and, and I'm going to be reading not really that fast but fast enough to move along so I could close this out okay Ezekiel faced a sad era in the history of Israel the glory of, of the Lord led Israel out of, the, out of Egypt the glory of the Lord appeared to Moses in the burning bush on Mount Sinai he appeared to them in a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The very presence of God, he nourished Israel in the wilderness, providing food and water. Now, 400 years after Israel took possession, hear me, after Israel took possession of the land, they were instructed to build a house for the presence of God, which was in, to be built in Jerusalem. Okay, Solomon, all right, which was Solomon completed the temple because you remember David's story, and then God said, No, your son. Solomon did this, he finished the building of the temple. Okay, now, and it came to pass, all right, it came to pass. I'm reading 1 Kings 8, 10, 11. And it came to pass when the priest came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house. The glory of the Lord filled the house so much that they couldn't even operate, they couldn't even move. Have you ever been just caught up in the spirit and you just couldn't do nothing? You just couldn't do nothing. I told my wife the other day, she was driving, and the spirit of the Lord was on her, she couldn't even find Linda's house. We done been there many times. No way you can miss, you, you can miss her house. You no way. She said she drove two, three times around the block and couldn't see it. And I said, what it is is the Lord was dealing with you about something. It wasn't for you to go in at that given moment. See, we have to come to a place and know that we can get so caught up in the spirit that we'll lose time. Amen. Stop watching your clock all the time when God is dealing with you. Time is only for us. It's not for God. It's not for God. It's for us. Ezekiel, see, chapters 8 to 11, it reveals how the presence of God leaves the temple. Solomon, and, and that was Solomon's temple, because of the sins taking place. Before he leaves, Ezekiel is brought to the temple to witness why the presence of God is leaving. Ezekiel testified to that, to what the nation's leaders are doing in secret. Oh, my God. Okay. Hear me now. Okay. God goes and checks Ezekiel and he says, come here, I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. See, because I'm going to show you in just a minute, the people didn't think that God could see them. So God takes Ezekiel and shows him what's happening in secret. Okay? He witnessed the idolatry taking place in secret, how the nation's leaders worshipped abominations in the temple. God asked Ezekiel, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the darkness? Now why would he take them and, and, and show just the leadership? You know why? It's because the leadership was teaching the followers. Okay? See, we talk about the scripture that says judgment will start in the house of the Lord. You better get ready for that. It goes from the house of the Lord out. 
See, we got to understand as being believers that we stand accountable for the biggest judgment. And we have to start living our lives as accordingly. See, now let me ask you a question. Let me explain so you can understand. Randall runs a red light. All right, God forbid. <laughs> doing, doing 100 miles an hour. All right? He gets pulled over. They write him up a ticket. Matthew runs the same light doing the same speed. But the difference is Matthew is a police officer. Okay? And he gets a ticket. Now, it's going to be really harder on Matthew. Why? It's because he is more aware of the law. Even though you know the law, you are the law enforcer. So it's like, dude, what are you doing? Right now, it's 300 miles an hour. You know, and, and there's nothing that's going to really be justifiable. You got a little play because you can say, man, I, you know, I, 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 it kind of looked like a freeway. I, I thought it. You know that. You see what I'm saying? So that's why he's dealing with the leaders. God did allow Ezekiel to see the event in the spiritual rehab. When you read through chapters 8, 9, 10, and 11, understand. Understand what you are reading is a spiritual action. Okay? God causes angelic guards to slay the idolaters in the city. That's in Ezekiel 9. This action is later uh, fulfilled when the armies of Babylon destroy the city and slay its inhabitants. Now, you see them slain, but they were not slain in the physical to a later date. What do you see in chapter 9 that he's talking about is happening, and you think it's actually happening then, but it's not, because at that given moment, Ezekiel is in a, in, 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 in a trance and a vision with God. God uses the hands and the swords of the Babylonians to do what he said he was going to do in chapter 9. You see what I'm saying? Okay, follow along with me now. The leaders put idols, images, which were abominations even on the walls in the church. They had turned their backs to the Holy of Holies, worshiping the sun. Women were weeping for the Babylonian god, Thomas. All right? God declared no mercy on these inhabitants. He said, I'm going to kill them all. All right? He said, he, he said, they all got to go. Fathers, mothers, children. Why? Man, that's a cold piece of work, God. I mean, you know, why all of them got to go? Well, if you continue to read in Ezekiel, they had to go because the parents had taught their children abominations. See, a lot of times we as parents, we have to understand that our children watches us. And we profess to be Christians. And see, you can lead them in a right way or a wrong way. And you are the one that's held accountable for that. Why? It's because you are the parent and you are the teacher. So you have to take accountability for that. So what God was doing, he was about to go through and eradicate a problem. A problem. We're talking about the glory of, uh, the glory of God. Hold on now. We, I'm, I'm going to show you something. Mm -hmm. Just tighten your seatbelt up because I'm going to hit a corner so fast. All right. The elders, these are the leaders of Judea. All right. See, they were also taken into captivity. See, this vision that's taking place right now, it's in the house. See, see, Ezekiel's in his house. He's having a vision in the house, okay? While the leaders of Judea had come to see him. They came to see him. They sat down, and then all of a sudden, he went into a vision, all right? As I said, he was taken away in the spiritual realm, all right? And then he was taken, all right? to a place in Jerusalem. And as he came into the eastern gate, it says in scripture that he passed the place of the demon of jealousy. 
Because what they had did, the people had built a statue up to provoke God to jealousy. They tried to piss God off. They said he, he traveled past it. What things in your life have you done, you understand me, intentionally or unintentionally to provoke God? Hello? See, it's not only about, you see, 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 when you three weeks ago today, when you kicked that off, when the Lord said that in his house, get the house in order, he has been stirring something in me. He has been showing me something. You see what I'm saying? But see, the house is not only the church. It's your house, too. Amen. Amen. So if we went to your house and did like Ezekiel did, went through the walls, opened the door, what would we find? Oh, Lord, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the pastor told me, he said, you know, he said, he, he told me, he said, okay. the reason I do drop-ins, okay. mm -hmm. and this is what pastor told me, he said, the reason I do drop-ins is okay. because see, when you come to church, mm -hmm. he said, you can hang anyway. Okay. I'm trying to tell and this is what he does for his ministers. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I, I come to your house and knock on your door. Okay. Right. How you right. doing? He said, now, if it takes you too long to answer the door, mm -hmm. he said, I know some out of order up here. <laughs> You got bad, got hold on, hold on. But see, it's not about what you do here. Okay. It's about what you do when you're not here. Okay. See, what we're experiencing in this house is the elevation of the Spirit of God. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Some people will be ready for it, some won't. But it doesn't change the fact it's going to happen. Yes, Lord. It doesn't change that fact. You see, you have to understand that, see, uh, 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 my godson Tony, when we was, I was over there with him, and, and Tony, I love him. I love that boy. Tony, we was over there because he does a lot of barbecue and stuff like this. And so one gentleman had called, you know, during the men's fellowship, and, and, and Tony answered the phone. Uh, the guy asked, could one of the brothers drop off some barbecue at him? And so I was standing there watching him, and Tony said, man, if you ain't on deck, you, ain't, you don't deserve to get what's happening over here. And I started laughing because I knew exactly what he meant. If you ain't there, if you ain't on deck, how can you expect to enjoy the benefits of what's happening on deck? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, you got to be a part of the ministry to benefit okay. from the ministry. Amen. You see what I'm saying? See, we go back to Psalms 91. It says, he that dwells. You know, that's the person that is stable. That's the person that has consistency. That's right. the person that is remaining. See, God knows everything in your life. He, see, he knew it before you knew it. You understand? So it's not about it's not about whether you got an overload. It ain't about that. It's about you learning how to balance your overload. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us today, Jesus. A couple of weeks ago, I said, it ain't enough hours in a day. We was in the church. And I told you, it's you wrong. What it is, it's enough hours in a day. You just haven't learned to balance the hours that you got. Mm. See? Because if you say it's not enough hours in a day, what you're saying, God has made a mistake. He didn't know, he didn't know better. He should have made 27 instead of 25. You see what I'm saying? This is a reality. See, this is a reality, people. See, see, see. You, you, we got to understand that if we're going to have the glory in the house, then we have to prepare ourselves for the glory. That means we have to do some reevaluating of ourselves, of the ministry. What is, what is, what is keeping the glory of God from his house? What is keeping the glory of God from the lives of his people? Those things have to be just uprooted and moved. They got to be destroyed. See, there cannot be any abominations see, in the house where God is going to be. There can't be. Because if we're believing God to move in a powerful way, if we're moving, believing God to do great and great and, 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 and awesome things in our life, that means that we've got to be people that's going to take the junk out. That we're going to do. See, the Bible says, Paul said it in Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. You do that, not God. He said, you lay your body on the altar, which is your reasonable service. What is your reasonable service? It's reasonable to come to church. It's reasonable to pray. It's reasonable to intercede. It's reasonable to tithe. It's reasonable to give offers. Okay, that's your reasonable service. He said, and then he goes on, he said, uh, and don't be conformed okay. to this world. Hello. But be ye transformed. See, it's time. It's time to welcome the glory of the Lord into the house. See, it's time for some self-checking, some church-checking, some heart-checking. 
that the glory of the Lord can move. Every person in here, I believe, is believing for a miraculous miracle in their life. Amen. Some of you have even experienced them, but they're not through. They're not through. See those things there? Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> that, that's small. That, 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 that's kibbles and bits. God got big things for you. God got big things for you. But it comes in his presence. It comes in his presence when we, when we dare to step out. When we dare, when we dare to, 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 to be like Moses. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, Lord. When we dare to be like that. See, when we dare to be like that, God says, that's my son. That's my daughter. He said, I got some big things for them. But how many of you would dare to do that? How many of you would leave this place today and not even remember what we talked about today? How many of you would leave this place and not even remember how God has touched you in this very service? How many of you would leave this place and not remember what God has done in your life? How many of you would leave this place and not even give him the purpose in your life that he deserves? How many of you would do that? We want his glory. We want his glory. I settle for nothing else. In my life, in my home, in my children, and in my ministry, I settle for nothing less. If I have to walk the floor at night till the sun comes up, seeking for his glory, I'll do that because I know in his glory. You ain't hearing me. I know in his glory. That's where I'm going to find myself. I know in his glory, that's where my needs are going to be met. I know in his glory, that's where I'm going to get guidance. In his yeah. glory is where I'm going to get counsel. Yeah. That's why. So if i got to walk the floor back and forth, mm. if i got to pace it till the sun come up, I'm ready to do that. I'm ready to do whatever it requires. Why? Because I need him to put me in that cleft of the rock. I need him to put me deep in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want nothing but him. You see, we got to be a people, not like, not like, look, 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 don't get me wrong. And you guys listen to me on the internet, I don't mean no harm. Not like the church next door. Right. Not like the church down the street. Right. Not like your neighbor across the street. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I don't want to have nothing, mm -hmm. especially not half of God. Mm -hmm. I want people to know that that is a child of the most high God. Amen. Why? Because when I walk by, they say, What's that you wear? Jesus. Uh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People, I don't know what you're going through, but it is in his glory that you will find whatever you're looking for. It does not necessarily have to take place in this church, but it will always take place in this church when you come here. It will, the glory will meet you at the door. The glory will meet you at the door. The glory will meet you at the door. Why? Because people are in this building praying. People are praying for this church around the globe. People are praying for you that you don't even know. People rise up early in the morning to call your name out. Your name. And you don't even know their name. Why? Because they want to see the glory in your life. We're not wimps, people. We're going to stand for God. We're going to stand and we're going to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, whatever walk he leads us on, we're going to take that walk. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. See, in order to experience the glory, you've got to have the faith in the glory. You've got to have the faith to step into the glory. See, it's where your lives are changed. I'm trying to tell you, it's time for his glory. No more playing. No more playing. As Paul said, when I was a child, I thought I was a child. But now that I've grown up, I think like a man. No more playing. No more letting the devil kick you all aside your head. You got men and women in here that will pray and stand with you. But you got to also stand for yourself. Amen. Amen. And you're going to come in here and ask us to pray, and then you ain't trying to do nothing. <laughs> you understand? No, 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 no. That ain't happening on my watch. I tell you now. Hello? I tell you now, because see, there's a, there comes a time. There comes a time that God will tell you, don't pray no more, because that's what he told, that's what he told David yes. about Saul. Yes. He said, You can chill out with that. Yes, Lord. He yes. said, He done made his bed, he's in the land. Uh -huh. Told him straight up, he said, Oh, I hear you, boy. Uh -huh. But use your breath for something else. Okay. See, it comes a time that we have to be men and women that are say, you know what, we are here right now, but God is taking us there. Today make that decision in your life. Mm -hmm. Today make the decision to walk with God into his glory. Wherever you're at in life, it's not too bad. You know why? Because you're still breathing. It ain't over. It ain't over. 
fat lady ain't saw on that one, <laughs> you still here. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to understand that now it's time for you to walk out of this church. Now don't thank you, Holy Spirit, for you to make a decision right now in this church between you and God. I'm not going to ask you to come down here to the front. Right. I don't need all of that. You know what you're going to talk to God about. Amen. You know what you need to talk to God about. Mm -hmm. But you make that decision right now that, Lord, look at here. I'm walking in your glory. I'm going to see the manifestation of the glory in your life. You understand me? I'm going to see it and you're going to feel it. You understand? you got to believe that. you got to believe that yesterday's is over. It says, how does that song say, the best is yet to come? You need to be singing that. You need to get you a headset, an iPod. That's all you need to have on it. The best is yet to come. People be seeing you doing like this and you ain't got no headsets on. They say, what are you talking What's wrong with you? Say, Just start saying, the best is yet to come. That's what you do. Again, they're going to say, you crazy. Say, yeah, I sure am. But if that's what it takes for me to get the best yet to come, I'm singing it. And watch, when it happens in your life, they're going to start singing the same thing. See, they ain't going to be as over there. Hey, girl, I like that song. I looked it up on YouTube. <laughs> so, amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor. In you. In you. Remain. Remain the glory of God. The glory of God. From this day, from this day, I speak it. I speak it into your life. Into your life that it will arise. That it will arise and come forth. And come forth from in you. From in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to remember this. The Bible says that we are the salt. Of the, we are the light of the world. We are the light that lights up dark places. It is the glory of God that lights up darkness. And the light that's in you and the glory that's in you, you will bring light into dark situations. You will bring light into workplaces. You will bring light into the laundromat. You will bring light into all types of places. It's one thing that I have started to notice about a year ago. A person told me, he says, have you noticed that when you walk into a place that has no business and then all of a sudden people start coming in, they just start coming in, he said, that's because of what God has in you. And it's just drawing. And I started looking, about a year ago, I started looking at that. Look, look, I had to go pay my mama's uh, 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 Department of Water and Power bill. I walked up in there, wasn't nobody in there. Now, one person, I walked all the way, the one right here on King Boulevard in Vermont. Walked right up there, got in the line, walked right up to the tailor. And as I'm talking to the tailor, I turned around, and the people was hitting the door. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, and I started looking at different stores and stuff I go into. Okay, it's because of what God has put in you. Hallelujah. You are more than conquerors. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. I really hope this message has been a blessing to you, because it's all about His glory. It's all about His glory. For our internet viewers, we'd like to thank you and praise you. praise God for you tuning in today. We thank you for being tolerant with us and just working with us as we perfect the U string um, over the next few weeks there will be some changes made and we hope that it'll be for the better yes. all right yes. uh, we want to thank you for allowing us into your home yes. on your tablet yes. on your on, on your on, on, on your whatever you got to watch in the song you understand know I me mean? we thank you we don't take it lightly that you allowed us to come in we thank you that this message has been a blessing if there's anyone that is watching me right now and you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ all you have to do is confess that Jesus is Lord over your life. That's it. Confess it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that you will be saved. If there's any sick that's listening to me, I take authority over every form of infirmity, every form of sickness. The God we serve is Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. I speak directly healing to your bodies right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for refreshing and revival in your spirit. For those that are tired and weary, I speak refreshing. Amen. Rise up. Rise up. Read Isaiah 61 and 1 where it says arise. Arise. Get up. Get up. God bless you. We love you. Everyone say bye. 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 Say it again. Bye. You ain't going yet. <laughs> <laughs>